New USC students may have to wait to join Greek Life. We hear from Greek Life leaders and what's at stake on the row. And Los Angeles continues to push forward with new regulations for the cannabis business. Find out what's changing for marijuana dispensaries. It's a lot different to go to a, for instance, DACA rally in uh, Pershing Square in downtown LA than to show up and uh, counter demonstrate against neo Nazis. And a USC student tells us about his experience counter protesting against the alt right in Charlottesville, Virginia. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. Students are waiting to find out if Greek recruitment will be delayed to the spring semester. Good evening, I'm Madeline Audley. And I'm Suji Nam. We spoke to Ainsley Carey, who is the Vice President of Student Affairs, about this proposal. Many first-year students have a number of transitions to make when they enroll here, the academic transition, as well as the social transition to college life. And that's rigorous enough on its own to allow our first-year students to have one semester, 90 days, to establish themselves academically and socially before joining a Greek letter organization. So there may be a semester of a financial gap, but after that, the new calendar begins from January to December, the new fiscal year. An organization coming to me and saying, we were depending on the dues of 18-year-old women to make our organization work, and I am sitting here saying, I am trying to make a softer, more humane year for first-year students. Those two things don't compare to me. Now, under the proposal, students would be required to have a 2.5 USC GPA and complete 12 units of USC coursework in order to rush. That means first semester freshmen would not be eligible. If we don't have, you know, those first semester freshmen or first semester students, uh, all of our chapters will take a financial hit. We, as the Panhellenic Council, um, in our letter from the presidents, we do express this sentiment that we do not feel that this eligibility change would help us continue on all of the growth and improvement that we've already made as a community. Kerry says he plans to make an announcement about the proposal by the end of this week. The L.A. County Department of Public Health says the number of sexually transmitted disease cases went up last year. This rise mirrors the increase of California's STD rate. Compared to 2015, chlamydia cases rose by 4 percent, syphilis rose by 16 percent, and gonorrhea rose by over 20 percent. Cases of congenital syphilis, which affects babies, increased by 67 percent. Young people made up the majority of the cases. STDs scare me. Uh, nobody wants them. If there's waits or you have to go and inconvenience yourself in order to get tested, people are much less likely to do it, especially considering how busy we are. Having to go off campus to get tested would be um, a lot harder. L.A. County has a condom distribution program and a new public health youth advisory council to raise awareness and prevent the spread of STDs. At USC, you can get tested for STDs at the Engelman Student Health Center. The city of Los Angeles released revised requirements for commercial cannabis activity. The proposed regulations clarify the city's policies on recreational marijuana. Under these revised rules, there will be no limit to the number of licenses, but the city may deny an application depending on the number of stores in a given area. Stores already following existing medical marijuana rules will get priority for new licenses. Now, stores can't sell tobacco or alcohol if they also sell cannabis. And dispensaries that were nonprofits can now become for-profit companies. It's a no-brainer. There's going to be a lot more tax revenue collected. This is a big experiment. Uh, and the whole country, the whole world is watching. They're, they're looking at, at a granular level at the regulations that are rolling out and whether they're successful or not successful. We reached out to the city, but nobody was available for comment. The regulations will be available for public review for the next 60 days. Then the vote will begin on a final draft beginning in 2018. Adults 21 and older will be able to purchase cannabis legally. Now, the deadline for DACA renewals is a little more than a week away. Some local organizations are helping people with the renewal process. Our political anchor, Tanvi Varma, has more. 
Thanks, Suji and Madeline. The Archdiocese of Los Angeles is holding a series of free DACA renewal workshops. DACA allows young undocumented immigrants to access education and employment. October 5th is the deadline to reapply for those whose DACA protection expires between September 2017 and March of 2018. These workshops provide free legal assistance with the application process. President Trump plans to discontinue DACA and deport those whose DACA permit ends by March 2018. DACA affects over 800,000 people. Trump claims that the program is, quote, unconstitutional, but says that Congress can address the matter in the context of broader immigration reform. We're engineers. We, we create, I'm a creator, and I love telling stories that are unknown, uh, people who live in the shadows, people who don't have color. And I'm going to continue to do that with my major. To sign up for workshops, please call 213-637-7820 or email immigration at laarchdiocese.org to make an appointment. Catholics. Catholic support for DACA participants is strong. Pope Francis has criticized Trump's decision to end DACA as not pro-life. Madeline, back to you. The Department of Homeland Security is planning to gather social media information on immigrants. The new rule was published last week. Attorney Adam Schwartz of the Electronic Frontier Foundation says it's an extension what the government has done for years. But this time, the information will be held permanently in someone's file. It would also be accessible by more government agencies. He says everything the government pulls now could be used later in any event concerning the individual's immigration status. Many rational immigrants who know about this will make the decision that they need to disengage and self-censor uh, from social media, uh, which would be uh, bad not just for their freedom of speech, but it's bad for the quality of public conversation in America. The rule also affects naturalized citizens and those born in the U.S. if they talk to immigrants via social media. It's up for public comment now, and it's set to go into effect October 18th. Well, now we're here with Jonathan Wachell, the former director of communication of the U.S. Missions to the United Nations and Ambassadors Nikki Haley, spokesperson. He's here to speak about the rising tensions between North Korea and the U.S. Also, for those of you watching our Facebook live stream, comment your questions below. We have lots. Let's get right to it. Thank you for being with us today. Pleasure being here. Sergio. Okay, great. So as a start, what did your job entail? My job was to ensure that whatever messages were coming from the United States mission to the United Nations were uh, beneficial to our policy as a country and in terms of what our agenda was uh, in every sort of aspect of what was happening at the United Nations, whether it had to do with Security Council resolutions, positions in the General Assembly on events that are happening or votes that were taking place in the various bodies of the uh, United Nations, which is a very large organization. In addition to that, my job was to be the spokesperson for Ambassador Nikki Haley. So that included working on her talking points and what she was going to say on, on appearances on network television and in publications and uh, placing op-eds and other things like that. And then there was another aspect of the job, which was working with the National Security Council and the White House and ensuring that our foreign policy agendas uh, were lock and step with one another to try to make sure that we were moving in, in the right direction in terms of what we were trying to achieve. So I think one of our viewers actually asked, what was it like to work for Trump? What was it like to work under the Trump administration? One of the benefits of working within the government uh, is that you have a number of uh, extremely competent people who are working in the White House and in the National Security Council. So on a daily basis, we were in touch with one another on conference calls, emails, and everything like that, and very bright individuals. So no matter what things might look like from the outside, Internally, there was always a steady line of communication between the various entities of the U.S. government, whether it's the State Department, Treasury when it comes to sanctions, and including North Korea, and other messaging that had to happen to make sure that we were working in, in, in a way that sounded coherent. 
Now, we have to talk about Trump's tweets over this past weekend. There was this war of words between Kim Jong-un of North Korea and Trump of the United States. So Trump called Kim a, a little rocket man, and he threatened to destroy North Korea. So what, what, how do you feel about this? What will happen? Is this dangerous? What do you think? I don't particularly believe that this heated rhetoric is, is beneficial at this stage um, for a couple of reasons. One is it, of course, distracts from the ultimate goal, which is to try to get the sides to quiet down so that we can approach some sort of agreement so that we don't have Kim Jong-un uh, and his government rushing to the finish line to get a massive arsenal of nuclear weapons and have intercontinental ballistic missiles armed with nukes mm -hmm. uh, that can threaten the United States. So the noise is, is not particularly helpful. And secondly, when you start to have parties accusing one another and when it gets personal the way right. it has gotten, right. there's always room, you know, it's one thing the president, though he, you know, will send his tweets right. and he'll say right. what he wants to say, mm -hmm. um, he answers to the American public. So he has some accountability that has to come to bear. Right. In the case of Kim Jong-un, he inherited his position mm -hmm. from his father who had inherited his position right. from his father. Exactly. They're dictators. Right. So he answers only to himself. Right. So when you have an individual who might do mm -hmm. something exactly. on a whim, right. that's a little bit more right. frightening. So okay. this, this noise that's happening right. opens the way for a miscalculation, okay. largely on the part of the North Koreans that, okay. that is frightening. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This was Jonathan Wachtel with us in the studio. Maddie, back to you. USC is known for being a bicycle-driven community. We'll tell you more about how biking is spreading beyond campus. And we talk with a student and activist about his horrifying experience in Charlottesville. And it's National Women's Fitness Day. We explored ways that the women are staying fit around LA. So good to see you guys. So, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea where it goes. <laughs> well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Mm -hmm. Is it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. like to teach all a part of our chances are you have no idea teachers today are breaking down obstacles finding innovative ways to instill old lessons proving that greatness can be found in everyday places and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable that's what it's like to teach A film student at USC's School of Cinematic Arts was among the crowd of counter-protesters at the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia this August. Abteen Haydari tells Annenberg Media about his shocking experience and how that day changed his perspective on protests. There was, I mean, a very, very intense sense of urgency once people realized what was happening and they right. heard the screeching of the car. Because there were so many people and this is such a small road, that was physically impossible to do. So people were getting pinned up against the wall trying to get out of the street. I definitely feel much more strongly about weaponry not being at protests, or at least uh, like, gun, like guns, like uh, rifles, assault rifles. Moving forward, I, that's something I feel very much more differently about, is how it actually feels to be at a rally where hundreds of people have weapons and you don't know anything about them. It's a lot different to go to a, for instance, DACA rally in uh, Pershing Square in downtown LA than to show up and uh, counter demonstrate against neo-Nazis. Understanding those dynamics is important when you go in in order to make sure that you're aware that this is a much more a situation where I will face confrontation. And I think uh, even then, uh, just there's other things you can do in terms of having first aid equipment on you, having water on you, um, being aware and keen to your surroundings and knowing how to escape.
If you want to watch the entire interview with Optin, go to uscannenbergmedia.com. Well, the L.A. County Bicycle Coalition started gathering data for its latest report on bicycles and pedestrians. Annenberg Media's Josh Cohen also decided to... The bikes just keep coming. USC and bikes have become synonymous. And while there are plenty of bikes in the community, biking itself is neither here nor there. One of the great benefits of the bikes is it straddles a... Uh, you know, the line between being pedestrian because it's human-powered motion versus being a car because you are operating a vehicle. While the two-wheeled lifestyle may be fun, bike experts are fighting for more recognition. The situation with biking, I believe, it's in a situation of transition right now where we're the bicyclists are trying to educate the car drivers and other politicians that we exist. Much like downtown L.A., the USC campus has been changing and new projects have led to new paths. Now it's worth noting with the new USC Village, see all these bikers right here, the crosswalks, way more open, a whole lot safer, and also the movement a lot more fluid when students are coming and going. The Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition study in 2015 found that new bike lanes reduced bicycle collisions by an average of 42%. Still, the safety concerns are enough to keep some bike enthusiasts off the roads. I would love to bike, but I'm afraid to bike because there's so much crazy traffic. That 2015 Bicycle Coalition study also found that far fewer cars were colliding once new bike lanes were installed. Josh Cohen, Annenberg Media. Well, Maddie, I don't know about you, but it has been hot. It has been so hot, but I'm really excited to see what next week brings. Hmm. I'm sure our other anchor, Erica Lee, can tell us more. Thanks guys, it's been pretty chilly in the Bay, but thankfully it's still very warm in Southern California. Let's take a look at the current conditions. Right now it's a 76, pretty warm for evening. Um, taking a look at tomorrow up in Big Bear in the mountains, it's about high 70s, oh, low, low 60s. And um, down in the coast in Malibu, it's pretty hot. So if you wanna go to the beach, it's, now's a good idea. Heading back home to USC, it's really hot, high 90s. So if you have a sweater, leave it at home. Let's take a look at our five-day forecast. High 80s throughout the whole week and the weekend. Looks like it's pretty nice to live in California right now. Wow, so what are you, what are you doing this weekend? What am I doing? I'm going to the game. What about you? Yes, I will be watching the game from home. I am very excited. Hopefully it won't be as hot. And it'll be good weather, so thank you, Erica. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Today is National Women's Health and Fitness Day. The first of its kind event will always be held on the last Wednesday of September. It's meant to encourage women to take control of their health and their fitness to make time for regular physical activity. Stereotypes often keep women from exercises like lifting weights and boxing, but most fitness instructors say women should do what makes them feel good. The platforms like social media, such as Instagram, everything, you know, I mean, boxing is cool for women, you know, working out, CrossFitters, whatever, there's so many different plethoras of fitness now that I think, I think we're in a, we're in a place in a society where really it's about female empowerment and that women are just as strong, if not sometimes stronger. More than 50,000 women of all ages are expected to participate in health and fitness events across the country, including boxing, yoga, and meditation. So I heard there was a game this Friday. That sounds about right. I'm sure Amy has much more on that. That's right. It's not just a high school football game on Friday, but USC will make the trek up to Pullman to face the Cougars. I also spoke with Pac-12 analysis to break down what the team needs to prepare for this game. And we have some fun insight into some of the USC men's water polo athletes. I also spoke with linebacker You store your guns properly. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories. And I won't have to tell my kids. This isn't a drill. Please. Please, do it for us. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Yes, I am. <laughs> 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 Give it to him hard. 
No, 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 no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No. They want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. <laughs> to Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? We had so many good questions to ask me. While number five USC is coming off of their fourth win, the defense will have a big test against against Washington State University quarterback Luke Falk. Each week we just come out to be one and zero. You know we know that we're going to have competition every week, so we just focus on the competition that week. We have a good a good culture. Um, it's, it's it's exciting right now. We're uh, we're kind of building on a week with some good momentum going on, and it's all it's fun just going out there to play with our brothers. Some of these games have been really exciting, so we, we just get to build on and get better. And it's we like I said, we have a good group of guys that just go out there and have fun. There are times where one side lacks and the other side picks it, picks the team up, and and um, you know we've we've found ways to be really good when it counts. Um, I think about the, our, our fourth quarter performances over the first four games, and and just how we've finished. Um, they've always been a group, a group of kids that when their back is up against the wall, they perform. At practice on Monday, Coach Helkin, Coach Helkin talked about Falk's ability to make plays and Darnold's ability to counteract those. Helton is looking forward to playing in a crowd in a crowded Pullman atmosphere. We look at uh, how Falk is playing right now. Um, basically 77% completion ratio, 14 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio, uh, about as efficient as there is in the league right now. Going up to Pullman, uh, I think great fans. It's going to be electric atmosphere on a Friday night. Uh, great for college football. It'll be a great Pac-12 game. USC is 5-1 and one in Friday night games since 1990. Their one loss was against Utah last season. Pac-12 analysis Yogi Roth spoke about what the USC Trojans will be up against and what we should expect to see from them. I was there last week calling the Washington State game, and they do a lot of unique things. I mean, you instantly think of Luke Falk, right, in the offense and Mike Leach, but honestly, I think the biggest challenge for SC is going to be their offensive line. I was surprised with how much penetration Cal's defensive front got at different times. They gave Sam Darnold and the offense a lot of different looks. It's exactly what Wazoo will do. It will be interesting to see how the Trojans hold up against the toughest team they have faced thus far. Today, Louisville men's basketball head coach Rick Pitino was placed on unpaid administrative leave in connection to the federal bribery investigation that broke yesterday. As he was not named in the incident, Patino had this to say about the charges, quote, these, come as, these allegations come as a complete shock to me. If true, I agree with the, with the U.S. Attorney's Office that these third-party schemes initiated by a few bad actors operated to commit a fraud on the impacted universities and their basketball programs, including the University of Louisville. Patino is the first head coach of a program connected to the scandal. In other news, our correspondent Chloe Chrissy Coppolis headed out to get to know the, a little bit more about the USC men's water play, polo players. Chloe, over to you. Thanks, Amy. This past weekend, water polo hosted the Mountain Pacific Invitational. The competition was tough, but they made it to the finals against UCLA. It was a close game, but the Bruins pulled out a win. To have a little fun before their games this weekend, I thought I'd play a little Would You Rather with senior drivers Blake Edwards and Grant Stein. Would you rather play water polo with ankle weights or a football helmet on? Um, considering how clumsy my teammates are, I definitely like the helmet. And yeah, having ankle weights, I'm carrying a bit too much weight at the moment anyway. Yeah, it'd be tough treading water with those. Would you rather be born with an elephant trunk or with a giraffe neck? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, elephant trunk. Would you rather have a flying carpet or a car that can drive underwater? Um, definitely a flying carpet. Um, I'm definitely in the water way too much as it is, and yeah, flying is much more efficient. <laughs> That's a good point. Would you rather never be stuck in traffic or never get another cold? Uh, never get another cold. I can listen to music while I'm in traffic, so I prefer that. You can handle LA's traffic. I'm yep. impressed. Yeah. Edwards finished last weekend with four goals, and Stein had 11 goals, scoring at least two every game, and three against UCLA. These two will be the key players in the games this weekend. USC will face off against California Baptist and Fresno Pacific on Friday in the Lancer Invitational. On Saturday, they play back at Pepperdine. Back to you, Amy. Protests have broken out through the NFL during the singing of the national anthem. I spoke with ESPN and CNN commentator L.Z. Granderson about the intention and impact of these protests. 
My understanding is that the players are trying to spark a national conversation, not just one within the NFL, but a national conversation about racial inequality, uh, criminal justice reform, police brutality. The fact that uh, the NFL owners and the NFL as an organization has issued these statements are fantastic, but I think the goal for the players is to have a much broader base conversation. It will be interesting to see what lies in store for these protests this Sunday. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much, Amy. Two social media platforms are updating their policies. See why these companies are making changes coming up next. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? Wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Well, yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. You're texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Well, Instagram is celebrating a landmark. 800 million users and introducing new tools to keep the platform a safe and positive community. Instagram is expanding its feature limiting who can comment on your posts. It's part of an ongoing effort to decrease abuse. It also allows users to block other accounts. Annenberg's Interim Director Gordon Stable says trust is key. Freedom of speech in these platforms really starts from the idea that users typically are passively aware of the terms of agreement, but they still have to trust that their content's not being manipulated or abused or that their privacy isn't being violated. The English language filter was introduced in June. Now the feature protects users from harmful speech in Arabic, French, German, and Portuguese. Almost like asking a company to police society. But when everyone socializes on this and you have people, you know, doing terrible things, that's committing suicide due to comments on social media, I think there's they have a responsibility to do something. Media, I think there's they have a responsibility to do something. It's extremely important that tech companies um, take the appropriate measures to make sure people are safe on their platforms. Now 500 million people use Instagram every day. Instagram CEO says their commitment to safety and kindness is more important than ever. Thanks so much for watching Annenberg TV News. From everyone at Annenberg Media, I'm Madeline. And I'm Suji Nam. You can catch us on the web at uscannenbergmedia.com. Have a wonderful night.